everybody, it's Mark Frilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be doing another one of my animal uh, themed videos and I've decided to do a sea turtle, which I think is going to be a lot of fun, especially because of the sort of reptilian surfaces of the skin. Um, as usual, I've put in these guidelines, these sort of squares that help you to place uh, the lines at the beginning. They are three and a half uh, inches on all sides, these two squares here. That works out to almost exactly nine uh, centimeters, and then just get a line, horizontal line, going straight across the middle. And uh, let's begin by drawing the shape of the head, which is actually going to pop out a little bit above this upper line here. Okay, so you can see the top of the head starts right over here at this left uh, side line, going up and coming down like that, uh, sort of meeting around the two-thirds uh, mark between these two points here. And um, the eye is sort of an al almond shape, I would say, sort of diagonally pointing down just a little, and a simple line here for the mouth. Actually, I think what is going to happen is that the upper uh, lip, it's not really a lip, is it? <laughs> the upper jaw uh, sort of overlaps that lower jaw. Um, but let's go ahead now and get in place um, this arm, uh, or I guess flipper, I should say, that's going to come right down the middle of it diagonally. So you can see here that we continued that line, came down here kind of curving just a little. Think of that as like the shoulder area, I suppose. And then uh, here we've got this line that comes all the way down and touches that uh, far end line, almost reaching the corner, really. And back here there's this little um, sort of claw that uh, to me almost feels like it corresponds with the human thumb. Uh, in a way, and I wonder if there's any relation there, but uh, uh, coming across here, this line goes right through the crosshair, so that ought to help you in terms of placing that. Well, let's go ahead now and put the uh, shell back here, and then maybe the rear, uh, one of the two rear flippers. So the top of the shell begins just a little bit above that line there, and uh, a very gentle curve as it comes down doesn't quite reach the far line uh, there before it curves back, and there's a line right here that represents kind of the edge uh, of the shell. And finally you get this f uh, flipper in the back that you can't really see very much of, so you don't have to worry too much about it. I think if you just get the basics of that shape in there, you should be good. Now I think we can just do one more in terms of the guidelines. We're going to get the underbelly uh, as well as this other flipper. All right, so you can see with this uh, fin over here, or flipper, I should say, uh, you have the corresponding kind of claw there. Uh, and because of the angle of this one, it sort of is a much smaller uh, shape and not so, you know, it doesn't have that diagonal length that you, that you have with the other flipper. Um, and I've put a line right across here that is going to help us understand where the sort of uh, belly uh, is that has rather simplistic scales, very large um, uh, scales on it compared to like the very detailed reptilian skin that comes into this area of the neck. And I think that's about it. I mean, you can see that I got also in the rear uh, flipper uh, back here as well, sort of a boxy shape there. And it is interesting that the, um, the it seems like the, the legs, what we would think of as the rear legs, are quite smaller than these uh, front flippers. Uh, seems a little unusual to me among animals. Uh, in any case, I'm going to go ahead and erase these guidelines, get them out of the way right now. I'll do that in time lapse, and then we're going to come back and do some real-time drawing as we get into the details. Okay, so we're going to focus just on the head for right now, and as I said, you've got this sort of diagonally um, pointed almond-shaped eye here, and you can get um, sort of an eyelid both above and below uh, that sort of surrounds that whole area there. Later on, we're going to be adding shading, but for right now, what I want to uh, focus on is the scales. Uh, maybe first, let's go ahead and get one of the nostrils. From this point of view, you can see at least one of the relatively small nostrils that you see there. And then let's get a line that goes around this eye area right here. And as soon as you're done with that, that's when you are able to start uh, separating into some of these um, scales that sort of fan out around the eye area. Now, depending on how uh, anatomically uh, accurate you want to get. You can really start studying photos and trying to get all of these things exactly the way you see them in the photos. I am kind of winging it a little bit, but as you'll notice as I get farther 
uh, from the eye, these little um, scales get smaller and smaller. Uh, and eventually down here they get so tiny that I'm not going to be bothering with the details too much. But uh, let's get an area here that would correspond with the lower lip. And this is another one of these areas of sort of widely spaced uh, scales that, uh, from what I could see, don't have very deep grooves between them. So this whole area becomes a little more pale. Uh, compared to some of the other areas. And, and there's really two different things that I'm going to be getting into. One is like, wh where are the different sizes of these scales? And then at the end, I'm going to come back and say, where are the areas of darkness? Because some of the scales are quite dark uh, and others uh, quite pale. So uh, I'm going to, for now, I'm going to just stop uh, and, and sort of get into uh, some wrinkles here at the base of the neck to kind of help you understand the, the directional flow of the uh, reptilian skin in here. And maybe what we can do is take this flipper. Let's continue. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going too far out of the frame. Hang on. I'll hold off on that part because I, I want to make sure you can see it. Let's stick with the, uh, the neck area right now. And uh, so, yeah, what I, I can't do it all right now, uh, real time, but uh, this whole area here is going to be filled with quite small... Um, scales that are tightly packed and uh, gets quite uh, dark in color as well. Um, so you can almost kind of wing that. You don't have to get too uptight about the shape of each individual scale. You just make sure that they kind of all interlock, you know, as you add one after another. But having that, th these sort of wrinkles in space at the beginning can uh, help you uh, make sense of where you're placing things. Um, there's, I noticed in some photos that it, there is a more of a horizontal flow of the uh, skin right here in this area. And again, I want to be careful that I don't um, go outside of the video viewer's frame. But all, all of this stuff um, I'm going to start separating into its own um, scales that sort of follow these wrinkles, you know, going a little more horizontally here. Um, and there will be quite a lot more shading added toward the end. But you can see how the, these relatively large scales get smaller and smaller, and that's when you can kind of stop being so precise and just maybe just make a bunch of circles like this, you know, uh, until you fill in that space. This area down here just past this lip also gets very, the, the line work gets very detailed, very tiny little um, scales. And yeah, hopefully that gives you all you need to know in terms of adding the you know large scales versus the small scales. So let's refocus the camera so that I can get into uh, refining the shape of this uh, flipper a little bit. So yeah, what I was about to say uh, earlier was that we could take this area of the fin, take this line right here, and extend it a little bit and maybe just give yourself a little bit of a circular guideline that helps you understand where that joins, you know, into uh, the body, the main body of the uh, sea turtle. And that'll help you later on when you get to adding scales onto the fin itself. Um, but uh, since we've got it in frame, I'm going to go ahead and move over here and show you this uh, fin that's sort of pointing away from us and give you a few guidelines that are sort of pointing down like this. Once you get these, let's say, three lines, um, uh, vaguely vertical lines, then you can start to take those and uh, separate those into uh, individual scales, again, having them sort of interlock uh, with each other. And this whole area at the tip, later on you're going to see, gets quite dark compared to this upper area. And I'll put a line in here that's going to just help you understand the structure, because these fins, uh, are, or flippers, I guess I should say, are very uh, thick at the front. And if you add just a little extra line there, that can maybe help you in terms of understanding that. Um, but I'll add a few quite large uh, scales that are delineating that, that upper edge there. And down here, frankly, the, the scales get so pale that I couldn't see exactly, um, you know, how they joined together 
in that area. But certainly getting, as you move back from that, you might get smaller and smaller uh, scales that are visible. You can see it's a challenging thing drawing one of these because there's so many. Like this whole area in here, we go back to the tiny circular motions of the pencil to uh, start to fill in that reptilian skin. And, you know, I would say it's up to you the degree to which you want to commit time to this. You could almost maybe just shade that in and be done with it. Uh, you know me, I love to go for the details, so that's why I'm... Uh, taking a little bit of extra time and, and filling. But all of this in here is all eventually going to get filled in like that with these relatively small interlocking, uh, vaguely circular um, scales that, that form the reptilian uh, skin. Now I'm going to refocus the camera so that we can see the sort of other end of the turtle and we can uh, hopefully do some real-time drawing as we refine uh, those areas and that might bring us uh, closer to the end uh, of the process. So for this area of the um, uh, flipper, I am going to put in a few lines that are curving like so to help convey the structure. And you can see by just sort of getting one after another, that can give you a sense of um, the, that surface, you know, that curving surface. And once you've got that in place, then you can start turning these into um, individual scales. Again, sort of having them interlock in a way that uh, that conveys uh, the surface of the skin. And as it goes across here and sort of curves away from view, I feel like these ones are going to become a little more elongated. You know, we can't see them in the same way that we see these. So, um, yeah, you, you can kind of get away with winging this area a bit. Uh, but do try to keep these front scales fairly uh, large. Certainly compared to the, to the super detailed little reptilian skin circles that you see there. Um, and then, yeah, when you get down here, things start to get a little interesting. Like this, we could say that this whole area here becomes its own... Uh, scale and maybe you get just a, a couple of more uh, of these um, scales that run along the edge of the flipper then you end up with a really long at least one really quite long uh, scale that fits in right there and then you can kind of wrap this up almost starts to look like a bird's wing down here and you can see how in a lot of ways I just I'm roping off different areas and then filling in as I go along, not uh, getting too uptight about any individual uh, scale. But one thing, if you want to get some added detail in here, is uh, get this far edge of it sort of breaking into individual bits. Again, a little bit like a wing, uh, because that's something I observed. Uh, and then some of these are also on this side are quite large. The scales that, you know, are along that other edge. Now the upper uh, shell part, it's not like a lot of turtles, um, like land turtles that we uh, see. Uh, it's, uh, I feel like, much smoother. And I'm going to do one line that kind of follows along like this and eventually sort of joins with that edge line there. And I'm keeping these lines quite light because uh, in the photos I observed you could barely see the individual um, you know I guess at this point they're almost like plates you know because it's so large uh, and then maybe get another uh, line that comes along here and that can help you again keep these lines that are they're revealing the surface the directional surface of the underside uh, of that but when you get up here you know, I think a few lines like this that are sort of conveying the uh, surface, kind of uh, heading off over the edge of it, you don't have to get too concerned about precision here. Just uh, hint at it, because really, in, in the photos I saw, this whole area is a little more of a smooth surface and not, uh, not so harshly delineated. And we're kind of getting down, you know, a similar thing happens down here, actually. And these, uh, the, the underbelly is composed of sort of plate-like uh, shapes, uh, at least in the photos that I studied. The 
you couldn't even see exactly. They kind of trailed off as they um, went down across the, this underbelly area. So that, thank goodness, is an area that you don't have to get too worried about uh, with the details. This, uh, again, down here with these rear flippers, and uh, hopefully this can be the last thing before we get into the shading a little bit. Um, the, these are pointing away so much that you can't really see the details. Uh, and I think you can maybe just get away with um, uh, figuring that it's going to be quite dark later on. Uh, and so I'm, I'm trying to fit the scales in a way that they, they would make sense in, uh, as covering that surface. But otherwise, I'm going to figure that these get so darkly shaded that I don't have to worry too much about getting every last uh, detail right. But again, like we did with this sort of wing-like fin, I think um, it helps to sort of break these areas apart, almost starts to look like toes or something. And now I'm going to pull the camera back so that we can see the entire thing, and I'm going to show you where the dark areas, uh, <laughs> dark areas of the drawing are versus the paler areas. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, blacken in this eye, which is going to be really quite dark. That's going to be one of the darkest areas of the whole drawing. But also the scales surrounding the um, turtle's uh, eye and head in this upper area uh, are filled with darkness. Each one of them you can kind of see me uh, filling in with a fairly confidently dark black splotch that doesn't quite reach the edges. Uh, of those lines. And this, you know, you could, once you've got all that line work in place, this really does start to feel a little bit like a coloring book or something. You're just filling in uh, each individual scale with a little bit of uh, black there. And the, the area of the front of the head is like that as well, um, relatively dark uh, compared to other parts of the body. But some of this, you know, I'm going to be coming back in with my trusty black Prismacolor and uh, adding quite a lot more shading uh, throughout this whole front area. But one thing to just keep in mind is that the upper part of the head, this upper lip to the whole top of the forehead, that is dark. Whereas, uh, for some reason, this lower jaw area down here is quite pale. So you can um, get an interesting effect if you try to capture that uh, in your drawing, this sort of dark topped head with a pale underside to the jaw. And again, this is, you know, I can only do so much of this real time. We're going to have to uh, do quite a bit of it in time lapse. But what I'm going to do quickly is to sort of indicate to you this whole area here, and I'm just laying my pencil sideways a bit to sh help you see this is where things get dark in color. I don't want to completely obliterate all the detail work that I did earlier, but I just want you to be able to see this, you know, if you're trying to figure out what is the pattern, where are the light parts versus the dark parts, this whole area in here, going right back behind that um, flipper, all of this is going to be dark reptilian skin. Right until you get to this line, and then this is quite pale down here. Now the whole upper surface of this flipper is a lot like what I just did there. I'm going to be darkening in each one of these individual scales, but the darkness doesn't reach the lines. It sort of hovers between the lines and you end up with this really interesting sort of snakeskin type of pattern here. See how I'm sort of filling that in, but I don't make the darkness reach any of those individual lines that I had put in to begin with. Uh, it's a really cool kind of a, uh, an effect that nature basically gives us to uh, get into our drawings. I predict that it, once I get in with the, the black Prismacolor and uh, do all of this, that it's going to be one of the prettier areas, these individual black uh, scales. And that really goes for almost this entire flipper. Over here, we're seeing the underside of the flipper. This area right down here, the sort of tip, gets dark. I'd say right in here, starting where that claw is, that sort of thumb-like claw, this is rather pale, at least in the, the variety of um, sea turtle that I was observing. 
And then you get back here to the uh, the feet, and like I said, this could you can kind of darken this in a combination of the scales themselves being dark, and maybe it just being uh, in shadow. You know, the body of the turtle is casting a shadow uh, upon the um, legs. And then this also, this under surface of the shell, this has more to do with, I think, just the light. If the light is coming from above and you get to this lower surface where the light can't reach, this is going to get uh, shaded in to help you understand really just the behavior of the light uh, from you know the, the illuminated top part of the shell versus the uh, shaded bottom part of the shell. And I may quickly show you that this, you know, again, because the light isn't reaching it, We'll just give it a little bit of a pale gray. But what I started to do here, I'm going to be doing all the way down here, all across this upper fin, uh, in time lapse. And I think we've kind of got to that. You're going to see me do a lot more scales in this area that I left blank. Um, and unfortunately, it's just all going to have to be in time lapse. But hopefully, you've got the basics of uh, what you need to create a pretty nice uh, drawing of a sea turtle for yourself. Give me a moment, I'm going to go ahead and finish this off in time lapse, and then I'll be back with a few final words. Well, that's my uh, video on how to draw a sea turtle. I hope you found it useful. Um, I do highly recommend using a black colored pencil of some kind to get these uh, darker areas as dark as they can be. The contrast makes such a big difference uh, in the finished uh, illustration. But for now, I want to thank everyone who has supported me by getting any of my books. Like the Two Pencil Method, this book definitely has a whole section on drawing animals as I did in this video. The Realism Challenge, uh, my uh, book on hyper-realistic illustrations, and of course, Mastering Manga 1, 2, and 3, my books on how to draw in a manga style. But I think it is time for me to lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.